Hey y'all, my name is Abby Teberg. I'm the Director of Children's Ministry and Adult Education here at Springfield FUMC. Tonight, for our next Wednesday night in the prayer series, we're gonna hear a testimony from Kevin Nooner. It'll be a little different than just a lecture. Um, we're gonna just have a little chat. I have a few questions and he'll answer them. That way there's some engagement and you're just not listening to one person talk. Although Kevin's great to listen to, so I know it will be enjoyable. So we'll just get started with the first question. How has prayer impacted your life? So <clears throat> I would start off by saying I was actually a little surprised. So when you, were, when you said, hey, would you come talk with me about prayer and get sort of, and give your thoughts on this? Actually, the first thought that came to my mind was, she does not know what my prayer life is like. <laughs> um, so interestingly, prayer has been, is if, when I, look at, when I look at my spiritual growth, prayer has been one of those aspects that I really need to continue to develop. Um, it is, I, I don't have a huge, huge what I, where I want my prayer life to be. Um, and so there's still some growing there to do. But I've had several occurrences um, that really impacted me on the power of prayer. And I've had several opportunities to change the way that I do things related to that. One of the first ones that I had a couple of years ago, um, I was at work and one of my employees came in to talk with me. And knowing that I'm a believer, I know that he was a believer, we talked and sort of had a little bit of a counseling session. It wasn't really much work, work related at all. And I had this desire, um, I should say I got this push from the Holy Spirit to pray with him. And I didn't. And so we ended our meeting and he left the office and that weighed on me and weighed on me for a while. And I think that oftentimes God will give us a second chance and so had a very similar opportunity a second time and took the time to go do you mind if we pray and that simple thing to him at the end of the prayer you know he's crying I'm almost crying um, but it was so impactful and that was sort of like okay there's probably something to this right um, <clears throat> and certainly you know my entire life I've been brought up brought up within the church and 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 have been around prayer and then, um, gosh, what, probably about a year, year and a half ago, started to, well, I guess about nine months ago, started to help Pastor Jerry with services here. And uh, part of that pretty quickly became helping lead the prayers. And um, interestingly, I, I, I've looked back at that and went, I've gotten sort of frustrated, uh, frankly, with the process. I've going through the process of becoming a certified lay speaker. And part of that was I needed one final class on preaching and got a little frustrated. COVID came, classes got canceled, things got moved around. And um, I had almost made this decision, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell Jerry he's going to have to do the class. We're going to invite some people to Springfield and Jerry's going to do this class because I need to get this class to get this done. And uh, obviously chose not to do that and have since then just completed that class. But... I heard another story one time, and I don't remember whether I've shared this story here or not, but long story short, it was one of the female reporters that was um, kidnapped over in the Middle East. And they had been out there for days and days and days, and she said to her partner, that the, or not her partner, but her journalist partner that was there with her, that, you know, how much longer are we gonna have to deal with this? And essentially he looked at her and he said, you know what? Things take the time that they need to take. No more and no less. Mm -hmm. And so I think about that story, and I think about like the story of even Paul, like really gung-ho, ready to go, and like, um, why don't you take a little while and then come back and, and start your ministry? And so all of these things sort of clicked together. And one day I went, you know what? <clears throat> Maybe the fact that I'm helping Jerry out during these services is because that's exactly what I needed to help develop my own prayer life. Mm -hmm. And time, things take the time that they need to take. And maybe this is the time that I needed to take where I've never really focused in, in my prayer life before. So um, 
you know, those are two, two really big experiences and big impacts for me. I think probably the other one happened a lot more recently. Um, my wife had gotten into a car wreck. Was, we had, she, she recovered from that, very, very minor injuries, but totaled the car. So we just tried to buy a car while having COVID, which is a whole interesting experience. But I had COVID, my wife had COVID. I had literally, we had just bought a car while we had COVID over the end of the weekend, which is such an interesting experience in itself um, because we needed a replacement. And I was literally one day past the end of my quarantine and we got a telephone call that my youngest son had been involved in an accident and had a pretty, pretty bad break um, of his elbow. And so Noreen was still on quarantine. She couldn't leave the house. Um, I went and got him. We, we went to Vanderbilt and at that point, you know, he's, he's 19 now, so he's an adult. So we get sort of got stuck into this. We can't have any visitors in the ER. So he's back there by himself. And literally I'm outside of the ER and I'm like, I literally don't know how much more you think that I can take. Like I am at my breaking point. And um, <clears throat> have some colleagues that work in the ER. I've worked in Vanderbilt for years and years and years. And one of the docs came out that I know, uh, you know, first name basis. and said, we've, we've got him taken care of, he's back in a room, one of my friends is taking care of him, who I also knew, we'll get you back here in just a second. And uh, got me back and I actually beat Logan to the bed. So, you know, Logan came in and he's getting his pain medicine and everything, trying to get his pain under control, but it's, it's a really bad break. Um, and it's a bad enough break that, you know, as I've went through my entire career as a flight nurse, we classify breaks as like, oh, that's flight nurse readable which means I'm not a radiologist. You don't have to be a radiologist to know that's broke. And I'm like, oh yeah, this, this, mm -hmm. is, this is flight nurse broke, like it's broke. And, um, and I'm literally in there in the room. Logan is really in a lot of pain. We're trying to get all of these things taken care of. I've got COVID, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm re just past recovering from COVID, but still getting really short of breath. My wife is at home on quarantine. She can't be there, which as a mom, you know, you can't be there with your kid. That's just devastating anyway. And literally, I'm at, I am at the end of my rope. And probably for the, I think literally the first time in my life, at the end of my rope and um, a text, Craig Jones and um, Jason Wilkerson. And I just said, I, I just, just pray for me. Like I am at the end of my rope. And what I really, really wanted was this lightning bolt moment where everything went away and things were better and I could feel the prayers and everything was great. And, um, Jason called me, and I didn't answer the phone because we, we were trying to deal with all of this, but he prayed with me over voicemail. They got in touch with Pastor Jerry. Pastor Jerry called, with, called and prayed via voicemail. Um, Craig prayed. And what I realized is probably about 20 minutes later, 15, 20 minutes later, this, all that weight was gone. And, you know, when I sent that first text message, I mean literally that was like the the textbook story of the dad sitting by his son wanting to be strong for the for everybody but just being like one breath away from tears just streaming down your face and like I can't I, I can't like I'm just I'm done I'm broken and the, all that weight was just sitting there and then literally about 15 or 20 minutes later I sort of looked around and I went it's it's gone it's gone and that's not me. Nothing really had changed in the situation. If anything, the situation had probably gotten a little bit worse because, you know, we had at that point had been told he's definitely going to have to have surgery. It's just a question of when. Um, so things were things were not like we weren't heading home, you know, with a little splint. I mean, it was it's a big deal. But at that point, I was like, things are different and things are different. I had three people pray. Who knows how many other people they let know, but at least three people at the same time, and I'm feeling better, which is exactly what I needed. And so that's probably the most recent, like, really big, impactful prayer story that I have of where I just went, okay, okay, I get it. I love a couple of things you said before I ask, like, the next question. Yeah. The first one is, that it's not just your prayer life impacts you, it's the prayer of others. Like in that story, you were done. You didn't really want to pray in that yeah. moment. You were so caught up in everything else, you weren't in the place to say the prayer over your son, over yourself. 
So other people did it, and it still made that difference. You, as a church and as a body, that's what we're there for. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we're not at the spot to do it ourselves, so when other people can show up, and that does show just how powerful prayer can be. Absolutely. And I also love when you mentioned at the very beginning how I must not know you because you're like, oh, like, <laughs> whoa. Like, uh, when I sat down and wanted to do this, I was like, I don't know that I'm the most qualified for this, but I, I felt that push. And when you feel that push, you will regret it if you don't do it this at is true. some point. So I was like, I don't know how well this is going to go, but we're just going to do it. And it's all good. When you pray on Sunday mornings, I love them because they're real. You can tell you didn't like Google like these scripted, like poetry type prayers, which have their place and are beautiful, but they're real. They come from a place, they come from your heart, and they're real. And I appreciate them every time. A lot of them come from the shower. <laughs> That's the best thing in place. Yeah. 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 So that, it is for me. I mean, <laughs> I, I joke about that all the time. And like, I'll say that at work. Like, I was in the shower this morning and I was thinking about this. And, you know, people be like, really? Like, this. <laughs> That's a little personal, but um, in all honesty, like every Sunday morning before I come here, that's my time in the morning, and I and I really sort of think about what what's going on, what's going on in the life of the church. Is there anything in the community or the world that we really need to focus on, or you know what what is just on my heart this day, and and so I I think about that and spend some time, and then spend a little bit more time and then, um, you know, oftentimes it is just, uh, it's not really, it's not what I would call praying from the hip, um, but it is not a scripted, it's not, mm -hmm. I, I don't write it down. I, I've got a mental outline in my head of here are the things that I want to talk about, or here is the, here's where I saw the beauty of God, and that's what we're going to work with. Um, and so often, if you, if you watch both videos or if you're at both services, you will, you'll recognize that the prayers are similar they're all like Jerry's sermons. The prayers are similar, but they're not exactly the same. Um, and depending on what happens in between, I will notice that um, the prayer that I had at nine o'clock, like last week, was then impacted by the Sunday school lesson that we had. And then that changes the 11 o'clock prayer. Sort of the same structure, still sort of the same outline and topics, but been impacted by things just as, every, as everything as we go through our life. So, you know, it's not a it's not, a, it's not an exact recipe, although I do have some things in mind that, that you know, we want to talk about. And I love it because so many times you think in a church service, like the sermon, you'll be like, oh, that sermon spoke to me. But prayer can do the same. Music can do the same. Sometimes you, sometimes Pastor Jerry makes this amazing point. And you're like, wow. And that's the one thing you hold on to from that mm -hmm. sermon. Or sometimes Shane leads a song and you're like, wow. And sometimes it's your prayer. Sometimes it's a prayer. I'm like, oh, I, yeah, I need a reminder. You know, so. it's, it's really, it's, I've had several people that have sort of said the same thing in, in different times, different places, but it's really sort of, um, it's very humbling experience to me when people will say that. Like, you know, I, I have been told, you know, you're, you're, you said exactly what I was feeling this morning, or that prayer literally made me cry, or, you know, things like that that are just comments, and it's, you know, that's clearly, it's not the intention behind yeah. it, but it's humbling to me to be used in a way that impacts other people so deeply, yeah, you know? So what type of prayer practices do you use to help, you know, influence your prayer life, to grow deeper in it? Yeah, so um, does TikTok count? Sure. It should count. <laughs> uh, it does count, right? So um, actually TikTok is as amazingly as that is, I found my way onto, um, and you'll see some posts every once in a while that I'll say this on TikTok, but you found your way onto the prayer side of TikTok or the Christian side of TikTok or whatever side that you landed in right now. Right now it just happens to be a lot of puppies because we have a new puppy at the house. But um, there, were, there, were, there was this time where I got into what I would call the, the prayer side of TikTok, and I don't know how else to describe it, but several people that as you would come through, it would be like, stop swirling, I need to pray for you. And some of these prayers were really, I mean, they were just incredibly powerful. Like I would, I bookmarked them and I've saved them and I will go back and watch them from time to time where it's just so, so, so impactful. And sometimes I will, I'll call it sampling, like in, in the music world, you know, like I'll sample that harmony a little bit. I'll sample that prayer just a little bit. 
And there'll be a bit, or, you know, a sentence or two in that that I thought that really, really spoke to me. And maybe it just spoke to me, or maybe it is speaking to me because somebody else needs to hear it mm. on Sunday morning. And so I'll sample little pieces here and there um, from those. I've also got, um, you know, a chaplain that we work with at, at my work that writes a lot of really, really descriptive prayers. And so um, I have lightly sampled some of hers. Um, but one of the, th you know, you, you asked about sort of those practices. This may be the yeah. third question. I may be getting ahead of myself. Uh, I will wait on that. Um, one of the other things that I heard at one point, and you can talk about them, whatever you, whatever you want to call them. A lot of people will call them breath prayers, mm -hmm. you know, of just like a, just a sentence um, or whatever it is right then. Not this, not this, I've got to, you know, I, I fall on my knees and spend 15 minutes on my knees in prayer. There's certainly a place for that, but there's also a place for right now. I just need to just two sentences. Here's what it is. And probably one of the, you know, one of the biggest impactful statements that, and I wish I could remember where, where I heard this. I, it may have been in our Christmas study that we just did in Serenity Now. But there was a statement in there as we were prepping or as I was prepping for one of my lessons that was talking about prayer. And it said, you know, prayer is, let me give you the backstory. Okay. A little bit of rambling here, but. There's probably a blog post out there at some point about, with me, talking about prayer. And sort of like, what's the point? If God knows everything, he already knows what's on my heart before I even say it, what's the point? I've struggled with it for a long time. And that's probably why, if you really want to like really peel back the onion, that's probably part of the reason why this is, that, that the prayer life is where I need to continue to develop because the analytical side of me evaluates this and goes, if he already knows, I don't need to tell him. And if he's going to take care of me, what are we, what am I doing here? So that's the little bit of the backstory. And then this, during this lesson, prayer praying for whatever it was, and I wish I could remember who said it, but there was a statement that said, so prayer is a, is like this conversation but it's more than a conversation. It's about the relationship. And the way that they said it was, you, when, when you're in a relationship with somebody, whether it's your husband, wife, your family, your kids, you don't just tell them I love you one time. Well, they know it now. I have given you the information. I've told you what the deal is. I shouldn't have to say it anymore. But that's, not what, how we, that's not how we are as humans. We continue to say it because the relationship is important. It's not about conveying information. It's about maintaining or developing the relationship. And like, it hit me like a lightning bolt when I got to that. Prayer, not so much about conveying information as much as it is about being in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, this makes a whole lot more sense to me now. That makes a whole lot of sense. And so struggle with it for a long period of time. You read one little thing, and it's like I got the lightning bolt. I was like, okay, that makes sense now. Yeah. Yeah. To go slightly off script, go yep. rogue a little bit. Um, all right. Are there any prayer practices you just don't like, like you will not do it? Like if you think like uh, there are these different practices you can do, like sometimes fasting, and you're praying through the fasting, or journaling, or things like breath prayer, things yep. like that. Are there any you're just like, mm-mm? I'm not a journalist. I don't Same. do that. Um, that's just not my thing. Uh, fasting is something I actually had the full intention of doing the Wesleyan fast last week until about Thursday night. And then, which is when it starts, <laughs> I was like, mm, maybe next week, uh, maybe next week. But, uh, and then tomorrow night I've got a dinner, you know, with, with something at work. So that won't happen either. But, uh, not so much on, not so much into fasting. It is certainly an aspect that I want to continue to explore. And, you know, I even talked about it a couple of weeks ago when I, when I had the lesson that morning. But there's got to be something to it, right? This is the way I look at it. Like, it's well within the, it's well within the Bible. And I don't think any of us can go wrong with doing the things <laughs> Jesus did. Pretty good example. <laughs> Um, and I'm like, okay, so, you know, I th there's got to be something there to it. And, you know, there, certainly there's a lot of people that will talk about it. And I think, I mean, Jerry's got something coming up on it, if I'm not mistaken. He does. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. But so not that I would say I'd, I would not do it. Uh, I just have not gotten into 
that piece of it yet. Yeah, yeah. journaling um, going to be something <laughs> probably not for me. I, I did bring this. This is interesting. So that could be like journaling. It is a little like journaling. Yeah. It's just so, pre-journaled for you. If you're not familiar with them, <laughs> this is like the adult coloring book. And I thought, you know, I, they, were, they were giving these away at a conference. And he was like, you really should try this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to be doing that. <laughs> um, but I'm like, okay, I'll just go ahead and get it. And then I got it. And we were out shopping one day. And I'm like, well, if I've got the coloring book, I might as well get the pencils to go with it. Because you, know, you never know, right? <laughs> so then one night... Um, like everything had just been piling up that day. And I thought, you know what? I need to just spend some time. And I don't know that I would necessarily say time in prayer as much. It was probably more like time in meditation. Mm -hmm. Probably had some prayer mixed in there. And I think that sometimes we get hung up on terms and maybe it was an entire time of prayer because what it, what I did is, and I'm not done with it, but as I started, like I just took my pencils out and started coloring and it was probably, gosh, maybe an hour, hour and a half, maybe longer um, into this. I'd already went through every single color that I had and tried to get <laughs> black roses and yellow roses and all kinds of roses that don't exist in real life. But it's okay because it's in my color book. I can do what I want to in it. Um, but at the end of it, you know, I got to here and I was like, you know what? I feel a whole lot better. I feel a whole lot better. And had a whole lot of time while I was sitting there thinking about as I was coloring thinking about what colors go next and what goes here to sort of just have time to probably really meditate. And so my intention is to further go down that pathway here, but actually spend some time actually being more thoughtful and prayerful while I'm finishing up the however many other pages are in that book because there's only one that's only halfway done. So I got a whole lot, I got a whole lot more there. You got a lot of time to, you know, dive You're deeper exactly into your prayer right. life. I do. Yeah. It's all right there in that book. What other resources uh, do you use to learn about prayer and help you grow in your prayer life for so, people who might want to? Yeah, so I think, the, you know, there's a couple. So one of them I brought here too. So actually is a formal class. So when I went through, um, so this book is called Let the Whole Church Say Amen. And so as I, was, as I was going through the path of becoming a certified lay speaker, one of the classes that you have, that well, you don't have to take, but one of the classes that I took is actually on leading public prayer. And so there's, you know, you'll see there's a whole lot of writing in here because a lot of this was, here's how you take these other prayers and they were like rewrite it. And there's parts of this book that frankly I didn't, you know, I don't care for. Um, there's parts of it that I found really, really powerful. I think that um, that prayer above all is a really, it's a personal thing. Even doing public prayer is a personal thing. But one of the things I really liked, one of the things I did really like about this is in the book it says, like your goal of doing a public prayer should be that at the end of the prayer, everybody there can say amen to what you said. It's not a time to, you know, get on a soapbox and talk about this. It's not announcement time. Um, there's a whole lot of things that it's not. And there's some practices in there that I still need to work on. Um, but for the most part, you know, it, it really talked about how you pray and the words that you use in that um, being very action-oriented, I think is the word that they use. Instead of saying it, and, and they broke it down to almost like a conversation. So if you were talking to your mom or your dad, you wouldn't go, Dad, I'd just like for you to let somebody come over. Or, Mom... You, sh you know, it would, you know, maybe you could do this or, or you could help. Me. That's not how we talk in mm -hmm. humans. You know, that's not how we talk. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot more, it's a lot more directive. Yeah. And you, you have these scriptures in the Bible that say, you know, approach and be bold about what you're asking for. Uh, be bold. Um, and it's, it's, it's always this weird thing between being bold and being humble at the same time. And I've said that many times in the prayers here on Sunday morning. Is like, you know, we're going to approach the throne boldly, but also humbly at the same time. And it's really sort of this weird dynamic. But very much of, you know, instead of... Let's see how I want to describe it. Instead of, God, we pray that you would heal the sick. Heal the sick. 
it's different. There's difference there um, of just, of just, I don't need to tell you you can do it. You, this is what we need. And I'm coming yeah. to you with the belief that you're going to do it. That was one of the bigger, that's one of the big things that I have noticed in my prayer life that has changed. It went from, and, and I've always wondered this, like, do you have the faith that can really move mountains? Like, what does that really mean? What does that look like? And I do think part of it is there's a difference between using prayer as sort of the wishing well or the, or the Santa Claus letter and being something that's really, this is, re- like, I believe you're going to do it mm. and truly believing it not just going through the motions and saying you do, but truly believing it. And I've seen that develop with, with my own prayers from a, I hope that you will, into I know you will. I love that. I think there's so much scripture that supports that too. I mean, if you look at the miracles Jesus did, he could just walk up to the person and do it. Mm-hmm. He didn't need them to ask. He had that power to do it, but he he had them ask. Yep. So many times he had them ask because they needed to want it, and they needed to know he could. Yeah. And it wasn't a power flex of, they need to know I can do it. It was, know that I'm your God. Know that who the Heavenly Father is and what we can do for you. Have that faith. Yeah. Have that trust. Absolutely. And so I love that. So, do you have anything else to add? I do. Okay. Uh, so there was also, there's another, pra- there's another prayer practice that I actually picked up from Craig, Craig Jones. And um, he, he, he made a statement one time. We were in a... We were in our men's group, and he made the statement of, when I pray for people, I have started telling them specifically what I'm praying for them for. So I think that, you know, as a, as a group, this is a very, very, very broad stroke generalization, but as a group, Christians often will say, I'll pray for you about that. And that's the, that's the last time they think about it. That's mm-hmm. the last time they say anything about it. And what Craig said was, is I've changed that prayer, and, and now I say, Abby, I'm going to pray for you for strength and for wisdom and for peace and comfort as you're going through this struggle or whatever it is, right? That's completely different. Like, Mm -hmm. and, and it's, and I was like, that is really impactful. And so I have started doing that. Um, one, I tell the person what I'm going to, what I'm going to pray for them for. But then the other thing is, is I follow through on it, right? So now if I, if I told you specifically, I'm going to pray for this or this or this for you, now I've, I put myself up against a wall where I actually need to follow through and actually do it. But I will tell you that being on the receiving end of that, it's incredibly powerful to hear, not only did I pray for you, this is specifically what I prayed for you for. Like that just changes. That changes the whole mood yeah. of everything. And so that's one of those little small practices that I think I've changed. And, you know, and other than that, it's really just I have, I pray in the moment now a lot. And I, I've started listening more. I think there's a huge piece of that is that listening. Like when I get that little bit of a nudge of you should send that text message or you should write that card, just stop and do it real quick. Or you know what? This person is really on, being laid on my heart right now and I know they're sick. Let me just stop, say a little prayer, send a little text, and move on. And, um, but I think you have to be open. You have to be open to the interruptions and you have to be listening. And we're not always so great about those things. But, uh, you know, that was another thing that we read in one of these studies here recently. It said that when you look at, when you look at a lot of Jesus' ministry, it happened in the interruptions. And you talk about all these miracles. And a lot of those, if not, well, most of those, I can't say all because I don't like to step out that far. But a lot of them were just complete interruptions. You know, he was on his way to somewhere else and he got interrupted and he stopped. Or I had these other plans, but stay, okay. You know, and a lot of that ministry happened in the interruptions. And if we're so stuck in our day and our routine that we can't take a moment to let those interruptions, I think we miss a lot of opportunities. And I'm not perfect on that by any means, you know, but just trying to get better. Yeah. Well, and going back to the, it's a relationship thing. Mm -hmm. In a relationship, you have to listen. If all you did was talk, there wouldn't be that relationship there and there wouldn't be that deepening and growing of the relationship. I think it's funny you bring up the telling someone what you're going to pray for in the moment. Um, I mentor a college student at Western, and we talk every couple of weeks. And she was just talking about the struggle of people randomly just saying, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll pray for you. And then you're like, but did you? Like, right. And there's almost that issue of trust at that point. And I was, talking, I was like, you know, 
I've really been trying to get better instead of saying, I'll pray for you, just doing it. If I'm going to pray for you anyways, why can't I pray with you? Yep. Not just for you. And so to push myself to not just be like, yeah, I got you. I'll pray for you on like Tuesday when I randomly think about it. Being like, no, you know what? We're already in this moment together. You're struggling with that. Let's just go to God that. now. Let's not wait. And so just the being more intentional with your time and actually doing it. Absolutely. So. You know, one of your other questions yeah. was, we started a little bit late, so we can run a little yeah. bit late. Um, one of your other questions was, you know, one of the, uh, any of those other, you know, books or practices or things like that. And if you remember probably about, well, it was probably right about a little bit over a year ago, we started this Lenten series, um, The Walk by Adam Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the first chapter in there that talks about um, worship and prayer. And there's a whole, you know, there's a whole lot of different acronyms about I pray and if you if you're getting new into prayer and you're really trying to develop your prayer life here's some acronyms that will help you but he talks about if you remember that study he always talked about five things there was five mm -hmm. things we wanted you to do you know start with five of these you know and his five things on the prayer were when you start with um, praise and thanksgiving confession and then he uses the fourth one on purpose as yielding or or petition it's petition because he looks at his ring finger and he thinks petition is all about somebody else. It's not about me. Um, and so using petition and then yielding, yielding to the, to the will of God. And so oftentimes on Sunday morning, I'm still using those five things. The praise and the thanksgiving get, get mixed in really, really easy. Um, and he'll even say in the book that he uses a lot of the Psalms or scriptures as inspiration for that, for that first, first portion of his prayer. Um, and then the confession. And then, you know, the petition for other people. And then finally often just, you know, yielding, of just yielding. It's not about me. You know, what do you, what do you need me to do? Opening yourself up. And um, so I think those are really easy, and it's just five, yeah. little, five little things that you, can, that you can help remember. But I go back to that, too. Um, you know, always, you know, just trying to have some sort of a structure, I think, especially when you're first starting out with your prayer life. Not that it's all about, you know, you have to be structured and regimented, mm -hmm. but if you're not comfortable with it, it's a good roadmap to start. Yeah, absolutely. And then from there, you can develop it however you want to. And I would say that even, you know, when we did this, even going through this class, there were like, you know, here's sort of the, here's the technical five pieces of the prayer. But you will see that in certain circumstances, you may only have one or two. You will leave out other three parts, just mm -hmm. depending on where you are and what's going on and what's important at the time. You can have a complete prayer that's nothing but praise and thanksgiving. You may yield that. You know, I mean, you may leave out the confession and the petition and the yielding, and it's just literally like, just thank you, just thank you. You're awesome. Thank you. Done. Yeah. You know, and then there may be other ones where it is nothing but petition for other people. You know, and so you know, not that you have to have all five pieces, but and and this this is very similar in, in some of the same ways, but but those but those individual portions. And having some sort of a structure, really good in the beginning, I think. It's a good starting point if you feel overwhelmed. I'm Absolutely. Like, well, what do I? What do you, I don't know what to say. Yep. What do I say? I just won't do it because I don't know what to say. Yep. I love using the five finger prayer with kids. Although, the thing I love most about kids and the things that scare me most about kids is they will go rogue. That is true. You never know what they're going to pray for. Most of the time, it's wonderful. Sometimes you're like, okay, let's move on as quickly as we can. Yep. That's great. So if you have nothing else. Will you pray for us? We can't really talk about prayer without praying, right? Like that seems wrong. I sort of figured that was coming. So, okay. absolutely. Right. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this opportunity to talk about prayer, about that relationship building with you and how important prayer is in our spiritual life and our spiritual journey with you. Lord, you hear all of our prayers. You know all of our prayers before we even say them. But spending time with you is still important. And we're thankful for all of those times that we're able to do that. We're thankful that we can even approach you directly with our prayers. You know, your son in his life and his death on the cross enabled us to be able to do that. Oftentimes, we don't do uh, what we're supposed to do. We stray away from that. And for those, we confess those sins and we pray for forgiveness. 
and we're thankful for your grace. Lord, there's many that we come in contact with that we lift up to you, and we ask that you minister to them as your wisdom only can see and only can do. Lord, be with us, guide our steps, order them so that we can do your will, and we can reflect your love to all of those on earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. And then thank you to those joining us in person and virtually. Next week, we will not meet. It's spring break for Robertson County. In two weeks, we're going to do prayer stations again. We'll have them in person and virtually. Um, but if you watched last week's, we would like feedback. We want to do better. We want to make it the best experience for you we can. Um, I hope you saw that from when we did them in the fall to when we did them next week or last week. I'm so thankful for our tech team. They have great ideas. They help make it so much better. I appreciate them greatly, and I'm sure you all do as well. So let us know like, if there are improvements we can make to prayer stations. They're difficult to do, not virtually. So if we can make improvements, tell us so we can do those things. And then we get to hear, in three weeks, Pastor Jerry talk about fasting, which I'm excited about. So thank you all for joining us.